Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Technically Explained. In this lecture, we are going to study the LC oscillators. So this is the basic diagram of the oscillator. Now in case of LC oscillators, the feedback circuit used is an LC circuit. So in LC oscillators, the LC circuit is used as a feedback circuit. Now this amplifier is going to provide a phase shift of 180 degree and this LC circuit is also going to provide a phase shift of 180 degree. So the overall phase shift is 360 degree. So in case of LC oscillator, the LC circuit or the tank circuit is used as a feedback circuit. Now this is the basic diagram of the LC oscillators. Now we have two types of LC oscillators, the Hartley oscillators and the uh, Colpit oscillators. We have the reactive elements X1, X2 and X3. Now the, when this X1 and X2 are inductor elements, that is inductive elements and X3 is a capacitive element, we are going to have Hartley oscillator. In this case, this LC oscillator is going to be called as the Hartley oscillator. And when we are going to have X1 as a capacitive, uh, capacitive element and X2 also as a capacitive element and X3 is an inductive element, then in that case the, all, the LC oscillator is going to be called as the Colpitt's oscillator. So in Colpitt's oscillator we have two capacitors and one inductor. In Hartley's oscillator we have two uh, inductors and one capacitor. So these reactive elements is going to act as a feedback which is actually the LC tank circuit. So these elements going to act as a feedback circuit and we also have an amplifier over here and this amplifier can be operational amplifier. This can be the field effect transistor. This can also be the BJT. So we can use the operational amplifier the FAT or the BJT for the amplification. So in this circuit the amplifier provides the basic amplification needed and the frequency of oscillation is set by these reactive elements. So now first of all let us discuss the Hartley oscillator using the operational amplifier. Again the operational amplifier we have used is the, no, is the inverting amplifier and we know that the inverting amplifier has a phase shift of 180 degree. And then we have uh, this uh, tank circuit which is the LC circuit as a feedback circuit. And if you can see in this tank circuit, in this feedback circuit, we have two inductors N1 and L2 and one capacitor C. That is why it is called the Hartley oscillator. And this feedback circuit is also going to provide a phase shift of 180 degree. So the overall phase shift is 360 degree or 0 degree. Also this loop gain, the, uh, the amplifier gain A and this feedback factor is so adjusted that the overall loop gain is equal to 1. So, so that to satisfy the Barkhausen criteria and to have sustained oscillations. Now the frequency of this oscillator is going to be determined by these elements, by these reactive elements L1, L2 and this frequency is going to be given as 1 by 2 pi under root inductance equivalent multiplied by C. Now inductance equivalent will be equal to the inductance of this conductor or uh, this inductor which is L1 plus the in inductance of this inductor and plus we are going to have 2m over here we have 2m is the mutual coupling so this inductor will have m mutual coupling on this and this inductor will have n mutual coupling on this so the total mutual coupling will be 2m so that is why the uh, uh, oscillator frequency is set by this tank circuit is set, set by this LC circuit is set by these reactive elements L1, L2 and C and capacitive element C. Now in Colpitt oscillator the circuit will be the same except that we are going to have a capacitor over here, capacitor over here and inductor over here. Now you can see the Colpitt oscillator using the op-amp. Again we have used the inverting uh, operational amplifier to provide a phase shift of 180 degree and the rest of the phase shift is provided by this feedback circuit which is an LC circuit so that overall phase shift is 360 degree. Now in Colpitt oscillator we have two react capacitive reactive elements which are C1 and C2 and we have one inductive reactive element which is inductor. And again the frequency of oscillation is going to be determined by the equation 1 by 2 pi C equivalent into L. Here in this case this C equivalent is going to be equal to C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So this is Colpitt oscillator. Now we are going to use the Hartley oscillator using the FAT. Again the FAT used here is the common source FAT. Why do we use a common source FAT? That is to prove because we want to provide a 180 degree phase shift. 
So we have used the common source amplifier to provide a 180 degree phase shift from, from this amplification stage. And the rest 180 degree phase shift is again provided by the feedback circuit. Now in this feedback circuit we have again two inductors and one capacitive. That's why it is called the Hartley oscillator. And this radio frequency coil is used to block the high frequency elements. So this is Hartley oscillator using the FAT. And again we can also design the Colpitts oscillator using the FAT by changing this LC circuit, by changing this feedback circuit. So here if we install a capacitor and a capacitor here and an inductor here we are going to get culprit oscillator using the FAT. So this is the culprit oscillator using the FAT. We have two capacitors and one inductor. And again the rest of the circuit is same. We have again common source JFET amplifier uh, which provides the basic amplification needed and this LC tank circuit provides the feedback path. And then we have Hartley oscillator using the BJT. And again, we are going to use the common emitter junction, uh, common emitter bipolar junction transistor. Why are we using the common emitter bipolar junction transistor? Because the common emitter bipolar junction transistor or the common emitter bipolar junction uh, junction uh, amplifier provides a phase shift of 180 degree. So this amplifier is going to provide a phase shift of 180 degree, and this uh, tank circuit will also provide a phase shift of 180 degree. So the overall phase shift is going to be. 360 degree that is why we are using the common emitter configuration and and this is our deca output decoupling capacitor this is our input decoupling capacitor and this ce is our bypass capacitor now the biasing of this common emitter configuration is voltage divider biasing so you have used the voltage divider biasing for the common emitter configuration or the common emitter amplifier so in this case the tank circuit consists of two inductor elements and one capacitor element. Now we are going to uh, uh, design culprit oscillator using the BJT. For that this all portion is going to remain the same only this tank circuit is going to change. So if you can have a look the rest of the portion has remained the same we have again common emitter configuration we have voltage divider by common emitter configuration again the rest of the circuit is same only the tank circuit has changed. Now we have again two induct uh, two uh, capacitive reactances and one inductive reactances. So this was all about all about the LC oscillators. LC oscillators has two types. One is the Colpitt oscillator and the other is the Hartley oscillator. Thank you.